It's the same kind of story that seems to come down from long ago. Two friends having coffee together when something flies by their way. We're now on number 37. Now this is um, a group you'd all know, Fleetwood Mac. But most people would think Fleetwood Mac, I'm going to talk about Rumours or Tango in the Night of them albums. But that's not the album I'm going to recommend. This is an album that was written in 1973 and it's called Mystery to Me. It is their eighth solo studio, studio album and as you know Fleetwood Mac is kind of a, an amalgamation of British musicians and American musicians. Released in October 1973, it was their last album to feature a guy called Bob Weston and most of the songs were penned by guitarist singer Bob Welsh and keyboardist singer Christine McVie. Both Bob Welsh and Christine McVie unfortunately have both died. Christine McVie died this year. They were instrumental in steering the band towards a new radio-friendly pop record. And that was the thing, before they were kind of more experimental. Now, Mystery To Me didn't sell particularly well at the time. And despite not having a hit single, a lot of the songs actually ended up on American radio. And if you actually listen to this album, it's in the wake before um, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. And the one thing about it, it's got a feel which is very much, you can tell there's American feel to it, but a British ideology as well. And I think this idea of bouncing between the two is excellent. Um, there's actually um, some of the, the choruses, some of the melodies are absolutely excellent. And to actually look at it as well, um, John McVie also was to feature a few who was actually married to Christine. Then actually once it got to rumours there was all these issues with John and Christine, they were having affairs. But this was before, I feel, this album is where it's solid, um, soft rock, beautiful uh, melodies, great songs. And so the selected tunes which have also were used by them um, was in the tours was Why and Hypnotise were played always on the tours afterwards. Um, and Bob Welsh would receive, recorded five of his contributions to the albums um, which was Emerald Eyes, Hypnotise and Miles Away and he did that, that was some of his stuff. So though it wasn't a commercial album, I'm going to explain some of the tracks. So Emerald Eyes by Bob Welsh is a beautiful, and it's actually, so mainly when Bob Welsh wrote a track, he sang them. Um, so Emerald Eyes, um, very like a loving thing about talking about a woman. Believe Me by Christine McVie. So again, you've got this kind of divide of, in this album you've got, you've got Bob Welsh wrote and sings, a track or Christine V wrote and sings the track. It's very rare that one writes and then the other sings. It is very different. However, Hypnotize, which is one of my favourite Fleetwood Mac songs, it's a song which you imagine if you were driving a car and Santa Monica in LA, that's the sort of feel you get. And Hypnotize is about the idea of someone seeing someone they're in love with. Um, Forever, another good track. There's, there's so many good tracks in this album, and it's and the one thing is. The one, the one actual thing is there's only one cover on the album, which was originally a track called For Your Love, which was done by the Yardbirds, a very famous song in uh, 1965, and Fleetwood Mac cover it on this album. Now the one thing about this album which I love as well, which is very interesting, is none of the tracks are any, apart from one, maybe two, most of the tracks are under four minutes each. There's only two tracks which are near the five minute mark. And what I think you'll find is when you listen to this, you can hear the actual origins of great songwriting in an album. And I think this is one of Fleetwood Mac's albums, which is really not recommended that highly. And I don't know why, because the songwriting is excellent. The, um, the actual singing with Bob Welsh, who I think has always been undisputed as a songwriter. Um, in fact, when Fleetwood Mac got to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they didn't even actually acknowledge what he'd done for the group. Now, obviously, he'd left by Rumours and Tusk and so forth, but Bob Welsh's influence on Fleetwood Mac's sound, because of being American, was actually very influential to them. And I think Christine McVie with Bob Welsh was also the back and forth between them, actually helped create them to create better songs. And I find that this album, as much as Rumours is a great album, it's very well sold, I find it, it is it, the stuff's a bit too um, ethereal for me, whereas I find these songs are very solid. And if you ever get a chance, Mystery to me is probably not an album you can find so easily. It's, it's, you can find it streaming, it's not that easy. Um, to buy it is not easy, most of it's out of print to buy. Um, but it's an excellent album and I think 
to me, it is the most concise of Fleetwood Mac. It's not over arty, it's not over up its arse, which a lot of 70s bands did. And I do think this album has got some beautiful songs in it. Um, I think personally, the Bob Welsh songs to me are my favourite. Um, like I said, there's only one song I can think of where um, Bob Welsh wrote it was Keep On Going and McVie sings it. But the songs of Christine McVie, I think are just as equally as good as Bob Welsh's music. So definitely an unusual album, um, really interesting. And like I said, it's an album I wanted to recommend because it's not so common to the, to the public knowledge. But it, to me, it is the best music Fleetwood Mac did. And I think it's something where I think more people should listen to it. And I think they'd be very inspired by it. Um, anyway, so that is Mystery To Me by Fleetwood Mac, released in 1973. Most of the writing was done by Bob Welsh or...